a very special guest with me today. I have Mr. Carmen. Would you like to tell me a bit about yourself? Hi. Uh, good to see you, Zainab, and thank you very much for agreeing to interview me. Um, <laughs> I'll be as good and helpful as I possibly can be. Thank My name is Stephen Kelman. I wrote this novel, Pigeon English, which is uh, currently being read by your year 10s. Yes. Um, and I'm here today to talk to them about the book. Um, I came to visit this school maybe three years ago, I believe, and this is my first time back. So I'm really excited to be back. The first thing I notice when I come here is just the amazing artwork that you have all around the school. And I feel kind of jealous because I was always a, a sort of a frustrated artist and I wasn't very good at it. So seeing all of that amazing work all around is really inspiring. Um, I wrote Pigeon English, oh, I guess going on for 14 years ago now, something like that. Is That's it, how old I am. So. Wow. So this book is actually older than you. Yes. Um, that makes me feel really old. Uh, I need to focus and digest that a bit. Okay, yeah. Um, um, the book was inspired by a, a real-life uh, crime, the case of uh, a young boy called Damilola Taylor. And back in the year 2000, he was uh, he was 11 years old, a uh, little boy from Nigeria. And he moved to this country, lived on a council estate in Peckham, in southeast London. And he was only in this country for 10 weeks when... His life was taken. A couple of older boys from the neighbourhood uh, followed him home from the school library one day and stabbed him to death. And it was the first example I remember seeing of that kind of that kind of crime. You know, a young person killing another young person for what seemed very random reasons. And I was so outraged by it and so saddened by it at the time that I just I couldn't get. I couldn't get it out of my head and I, I ended up writing my first novel based in part on that story. So it's uh, about a, a fictional character called Harry who is loosely inspired by Damilola. Uh, and he comes over to this country from Ghana and ends up living on a council estate which is very similar to the Marsh Farm estate in Luton, the one I grew up on. And I just, through the book, I wanted to explore my neighbourhood. I wanted to talk about the place where I was born and raised and uh, also explore my feelings about this story about Damilola and how deeply it had affected me, how deeply it had affected people around me, people I was close to. Um, I think the central idea that I wanted to explore was just about how a young person, in whatever environment they end up in and wherever they're from originally, about their their core experience being one of trying to hold on to their essential goodness yeah. in a world that can often be quite a bad place. You know, you, you talked about um, Harry's from Ghana, right? So how did you how were you able to capture the culture of like the Ghanaians so well? How how were you able to do that? Well, I don't know if, if I've done it well. That's not for me to say. I think I was so in love with the character at that point that I felt it was a risk worth taking to go down the path where I had to teach myself or, or, or learn things that I didn't already know and uh, did a lot of research, spoke to a lot of people yeah. around me on my estate. There was a, a growing Ghanaian population in Luton at yeah. the time that I, I first began writing the book. and I had those experiences those first-hand experiences to draw from. Um, I think a, a lot of times we're told as writers to write what you know, and obviously there, there's there's a lot of truth to that. But in this instance, I wanted to write what I wanted to know. I wanted to find out more for myself as well. So the experience of researching it kind of happened along the way. Um, I, I, I guess I was also interested in capturing some of those more universal elements, yeah. you know, the idea of... You know, we've all grown up, we've all been 11 years old, we've all been at high school for the first time, we've all been trying to make friends and fit in for the first time. Um, so there was a universe of that universality about those experiences that I yeah. wanted to capture. And again, like I say, the idea of um, portraying my neighbourhood, which was a place that very often wasn't considered good enough material for fiction. You know, oh, okay. the books I read growing up, I don't remember reading many where the protagonists were working class people yeah. on a council estate. 
you, know, usually the rich people are like princesses and exactly kings and, and then your experience of fiction feels quite removed from your own life and yeah. I just wanted to think about and explore and then write about the world that I knew in yeah. one way or another. Were you always a writer or did you do something else before, before this? I was a, a wannabe writer from the age of six. I mean, that was the only ambition I remember really having. I went through a, a small phase where I liked the idea of maybe being a footballer or an English teacher, but writing was always a thing for me from a very early age that's the only thing I could really imagine myself doing and then of course you have to live a certain amount of life and observe a certain amount of life in order to give yourself the the material to to write about yeah. um, so I was always kind of writing in my spare time just stupid little science fiction short stories and poems and song lyrics and all that kind of stuff but I was always aware that when the right story came to me, the, the one that felt at least like the right story, I would begin my first novel based on that. And when Abelona's case emerged, something just clicked. And yeah. I felt like for the first time, this is something I really want to explore and really want to try at least yeah. to write about. So if there's any um, aspiring authors here in this school or anywhere in any of the schools in the Trust, what would you say to them? What advice would you give to them? Well, I think first and foremost, we, we have to allow ourselves to believe and then to accept that we're all storytellers, yeah. naturally, even if we, we don't realise it. You know, Every one of us is a unique individual who has a unique combination of ideas, opinions, memories, past experiences, hopes, dreams, fears, all of those things in you know, a unique combination make us who we are and then by extension that makes us natural storytellers yeah. in a way because we're all the main character of our own unique story and for me it was important to realise that my take on the world, my ideas, my opinions were valid and deserve to be heard. Everyone's yeah. story does deserve to be heard. Whether you're writing a story based on yourself or on someone you've never met or you're just expressing your own day-to-day -day life through words or through music or art, whatever it can be, um, we're all architects of, of our own story and, and they're all as valid as anybody else's. I think that's the most important place to start as a writer, to accept that, to accept that what you think and what you have to say yeah. is valuable. So there you go, guys, from the expert himself. So thank you so much for coming on to the podcast. I really enjoyed hearing about your journey. Um, and I really hope you guys enjoyed listening to his story as well. Um, so I hope to see you all on the next one. Bye. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you.